There are several lesser known sports that don't get the attention and fanfare they deserve. Some are dangerous and others are just plain bizarre. So put your game face on and join us for the top 15 most rare and unusual sports in the world. Number 15, Quidditch. Let's kick off our list with something a little goofy. And even though the sport is essentially made up, the game of Quidditch has managed to leap off the page and onto our muggle fields. Harry Potter fans were so captivated by the airborne sport that they managed to create their own version that's a little more accessible. So you won't need a flying broomstick to play this version of Quidditch. And believe it or not, people can get pretty intense out there. These real-world enthusiasts typically play on a field hockey pitch or hold brooms between their legs as they run around trying to catch the quaffle, avoid the bludgers, and of course snag that illustrious golden snitch. But seeing as how magic isn't real, players have to improvise, usually having someone dressed in gold act as the game-winning ball, and run around the field as fast and as frenzied as their muggle legs will let them go. This form of Quidditch started out at a few colleges in the United States, but when word spread like wildfire, it quickly spread all across the country. All of these games, though, are intramural, so don't expect to see it officially recognized anytime soon. Sometimes it's just about having fun. Number 14. Sepak Takraw Unless you're from Southeast Asia, or at least have spent a good amount of time there, chances are you've never heard of this wild sport before. Sipak to crawl is like volleyball except the athletes can only use their feet, knees, shoulders, and head to launch the ball over the net. Because of these rules, the game is also fittingly known as kick volleyball. And if you think this sport looks tough, you're right. It's not the type of game you're going to find children playing at recess because the amount of athleticism required in Sipak to crawl is astounding. Players are constantly launching themselves high into the air to get their unique woven rattan ball over the net. It also requires a great deal of accuracy to earn a point. It's no easy feat to perfectly aim a ball just using about anything but your hands. These strong yet nimble players managed to pull it off. Sipak de Croix officially kicked off in 1945, and it wasn't until the mid-1980s that United States teams entered the fray, albeit they have a tendency to lose quite badly. Number 13. Tuna Tossing some sports also allow us to show off just how strong we are, and sometimes tuna tossing is the perfect way to do that. Tuna tossing began in South Australia, in the small fishing community of Port Lincoln. Whether they came up with the idea because they were bored or had too much tuna is anybody's guess, but the stories say that it was inspired by the local fishermen tossing their catch onto their trucks with such force that they decided to make it an attraction at a local festival. The rules of tuna tossing are quite simple. Whoever can throw one 20-pound tuna the farthest is the winner. Maybe if they're lucky, they can take it home. Although what even the best chefs can do with a beaten up 20-pound tuna is anybody's guess. The festival and sport are still going on to this day, but officials have found a way to keep things a little cleaner, and maybe even some tuna in the process by having the participants chuck around a giant rubber fish instead. Number 12, Toe Wrestling. There's Greco-Roman wrestling, there's arm and even thumb wrestling, but toe wrestling? Yeah, you heard that right. Toe wrestling isn't all that different from arm wrestling, only this time around players are doing their best to pin their opponent's toes for three seconds. And if you're competing in this unusual sport, you better have cleaned your feet and cut your toenails, because if you haven't been able to figure it out already, this one is done barefoot. Players have to alternate between their left and right feet over three rounds in this winner-take-all style event. Men and women are put in separate divisions, but there are no weight classes here, so the bigger the foot, the better the chances of quite literally crushing the competition. And for those with a true competitive spirit, the World Toe Wrestling Championship has been crowning winners for the last five decades. Number 11. Hot Dog Eating Contest This one isn't so rare, but when it comes down to it, a hot dog eating contest is downright unusual. Consider how many dogs these competitors can eat in such a short amount of time and how much preparation they put into the event. The only rule in this funky sport is to eat as much as you can in 10 minutes. Most people can maybe eat a handful, but hot dog legends like Kobayashi and Joey Chestnut can wolf down about 76 in that same time span. People out there have done the math and calculated that Chestnut has eaten well over 19,000 hot dogs in his lifetime. It's probably not the healthiest lifestyle, but the man stands at 6 foot 1 inches tall and weighs around 220 pounds, so the man is by no means obese. 
and Kobayashi is just 5 foot 8 inches tall, and despite some yo-yoing, weighs about 130 pounds. And while the annual Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest at Coney Island isn't the only competitive eating event in the world, it certainly has garnered the most attention and prestige. Number 10. Man vs. Horse Marathons It is hard enough running a marathon against a fellow trained athlete in peak physical condition, but what about racing a horse? Do you think anyone even stands a chance? Well, probably not. But people have been trying every year in Wales for the last few decades. It all started out in a pub in 1979, when Gordon Green and Glenn Jones argued over who would win in a marathon between a horse and a man. It's a strange argument to have, but sillier things have been uttered late at night at the pub. Ever since then, the annual 22-mile marathon is held in Welshtown, Wales, where men and horses pony up to see who's the fastest. And the marathon can be a bit treacherous, with all the participants traversing through rough field terrain and the occasional small stream. And of course, there's a jockey riding and guiding the horse along the course. If someone does manage to beat the horse, then they win a hefty cash prize of $40,000. Believe it or not, two men have managed to walk away with the prize many already. Number 9. Wife Carrying there are some sports out there that really don't leave their small towns, and wife carrying sounds like it's one of those traditions. Wife carrying has somehow managed to gain some global appeal. The unusual sport's origins began in Finland with the 19th century local legend of Ronkainen the robber. The story says that Ronkainen and his group of robbers lived in the forest and would sneak into towns to steal food and women. The women were slung over the gang members' shoulders and hauled off back into the forest. Whether or not the legend is true doesn't really matter at this point, because wife carrying is here to stay. The rules are quite simple. Men carry a woman through an obstacle course and whoever has the fastest time is the winner. There are apparently different ways to carry your wife too. There's the classic piggyback, the fireman's carry, and then the Estonian style where she's upside down with her legs over his neck and shoulders. Hey, whatever works. The Wife Carrying World Championship is held every year and welcomes state champions from Great Britain, Australia, Germany, Estonia, and even the United States. Number 8. Bog Snorkeling Sometimes sports can get a little dirty. American football is played rain or shine, sleet or snow, and you of course run the risk of getting sandy when you play some beach volleyball. But what about playing in a bog? Well, that's exactly what bog snorkeling is. And while you may not be rolling around the mud and gunk, participants are certainly getting down and dirty in there. Another odd sport with roots in a Welsh town, the bog snorkelers are decked out in their flippers and snorkeling gear and have to complete two lengths of the 60-yard trench. It may sound easy, but to make it harder, you're not allowed to use your hands. Feet only. Couple that with the fact that you're neck deep in bog water and trying to keep it out of your mouth and you're actually looking at one tough sport, no matter how silly it may look to the untrained eye. And every year in the town of Llanurted Wells, Wales, you can check out the World Bog Snorkeling Championships and see just how it's done down there. Number 7. Extreme Ironing Everybody hates doing household chores, but what if you can make it fun by taking it to the next level? That's exactly what extreme ironing athletes do. This extreme sport involves the participants packing up their wrinkly clothes, ironing board, and iron, and hauling them to the most remote or dangerous location they can find. And from there, they get to ironing. Extreme ironing manages to mix extreme outdoor activities and boring chores to produce something fun, no matter how unusual it may be. It's a great way to get people out of the house and perhaps even a better way to get those shirts pressed just right. Some of the most notable performances were done after a tough rock climb, in forests, on a canoe, on top of statues, underwater, and even while skiing and parachuting. And you can either iron on your own or with a small team. The sport has a governing body called the Extreme Ironing Bureau that's always accepting new athletes for this different kind of Iron Man. Number 6. Cheese Rolling the first ever recorded cheese race happened back in 1826, but even that account said that this has been going on for even longer. The annual Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake event takes place in Gloucester, England. The rules are pretty simple. A 9-pound Gloucester double cheese round is sent rolling down a 200-yard long hill. 
the hill is so steep that if you're standing at the top, you can't even see the slope. But the weight of the cheese round combined with the slope makes the round travel at a top speed of 70 miles an hour, which can be pretty dangerous for the spectator standing at the bottom of the hill. Their only advice is to duck when that thing gets close, because it can easily turn you into head cheese. The participants wait at the top and the cheese is given a head start, but once that thing starts rolling, that's when the bodies start flying. Everyone runs down the hill as fast as they can, but the hill is so treacherous that they mostly fall, roll, and tumble. This sport is actually incredibly dangerous for everyone involved and injury is very, very common. But the winner gets not just the bragging rights, but the cheese round too. And perhaps the funkiest part of the Cooper Hill cheese rolling in Wake is that it's put on each year by the local cheese rollers pub. Number five, unicycle hockey. Hockey is a pretty tough sport. First, you have to be a great skater. You've got to be nimble in all of that equipment. And then there's the body checking and the occasional fist fight. And the completely unrelated sport of unicycling is tough in its own right as well. Staying balanced high up in the air ain't no easy feat. And that's if you can even get on the thing without cracking open your skull. But what if someone was crazy enough to combine the two activities? Well, that's exactly what people did when they created the unusual yet aptly named sport of unicycle hockey. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out just what goes on here. Players get on their unicycles, grab a hockey stick, and go to town. There are five players per team, and the biggest rule here is that both feet must be on the unicycle at all times. The arena is set up pretty similarly to an ice hockey rink, and the goals are placed so that players can ride behind them as well. This is another rare sport that manages to have a governing body, the International Unicycling Federation. Number four, competitive worm charming. Worm charming, also known as worm fiddling and worm grunting, is a method of extracting worms from the ground. The worms are usually used for fishing or to collect bait, sometimes maybe even to make compost. Worms are sensitive to vibrations in the soil because it typically means a mole or other subterranean predator is closing in and looking to make a meal of them. So when someone goes out worm charming, they vibrate the soil to scare the worms and bring them to the surface. But in certain more rural parts of the world, people have managed to turn this into a sport. Enter the world of competitive worm charming. All the participants have to do is lure as many earthworms out of the ground as they can in their allotted area within a specific time. There are a handful of techniques that get these creepy crawlies up to the surface, but the most common, most accessible, and most popular is to just tap the ground rhythmically until the worms start showing up. Teams will consist of the charmer, catcher, and counter. And these slimy competitions are held from Texas to Ontario to Cheshire. Number three, pumpkin chunkin. Pumpkin chunkin is a pretty simple sport, but how it's done, maybe not so much. Participants bring their homemade slingshots, catapults, trebuchets, and even cannons and load them up with a big old pumpkin and let her rip. This sport happens in the fall when pumpkins are in season in the United States and is put on by the World Championship Pumpkin Chunkin Association. The event has been going on since 1985, with the longest shot even making it into the Guinness Book of World Records. The title is held by the pneumatic cannon named the Big 10 Inch and it managed to chuck that pumpkin a whopping 5,545 and a half feet in Moab, Utah in 2010. That's absolutely insane. And people can get pretty creative when it comes to their prized pumpkin chuckers. Just try and make sure that you're not standing on the other end of the field when one of these wild fall events is going on. Number two, caber tossing. Typically, a part of the spring and summer Scottish Highland games, caber tossing requires a serious amount of strength to pull off. This sport may look a bit unorthodox to the global community, but it's remained a great Scottish pastime. This sport involves the eponymous tosser to, well, toss a large tapered pole called the caber. The caber is usually made of a larch tree, so you can really think of caber tossing as tree throwing. The cabers are usually 16 to 20 feet tall and can weigh anywhere from 90 to 150 pounds, so the weak need not apply. But how does a sport like this even come about? Well, it's said that it started when the folks were throwing logs across narrow chasms to make footbridges and lumberjacks tossing logs into streams. Eventually, the Scottish lumberjacks wanted to see who the biggest and strongest was, and around the 16th century, caber tossing was born. Number 1. 
gurning contests. A gurn is an English term meaning an extremely distorted and all-around goofy-looking facial expression. When we were kids, and even when we're fun-loving adults, we're probably making gurns all the time. And at school, some kids may want to see who can make the silliest face. But what happens when adults want to take it to the next level? Well, then you've got yourself an official gurning contest on your hands. Gurning contests are a British tradition where participants compete to see who can pull off the most distorted facial expression possible. Of course, it sounds silly, but some people are surprisingly able to make some funky faces. Part of the tradition also involves making the face while sticking your head through a horse collar in what's known as gurning through a braffin. The World Gurning Championships have taken place every year since at least 1852. No one really knows how it was started, but what is known is that the best gurners are people without teeth, since they have more room to move and distort their jaws. But the sport even has two top all-stars, Tommy Mattinson, who won the men's world title 15 times, and Ann Woods, who won the women's world title an amazing 28 times. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.